Welcome everybody to this uh, lecture number five. Uh, the topic of today's lecture is on speech coding. So this is about how to compress uh, speech signals in terms of their information content. So basically reduce the number of bits of information required to transmit speech signals. So speech coding or digital speech coding is the process by which the speech signal can be temporarily compressed into less bits per second. And afterwards, it can be decompressed while preserving its most important content. And basically what we want is that the speech signal can be decoded from this bit stream of reduced bits, um, providing the same speech understanding and also the same speech quality as the original uncompressed sound. The main objectives of digital speech coding are to lower the bit rate used to represent a speech signal while maintaining an adequate level of perceptual fidelity. In addition, for some applications, we need to consider the complexity, which means the amount of computations that are required to do this process of encoding and decoding. So basically the number of operations per second is what we understand as the computational complexity and we want it, it to be low. There are many other secondary objectives that we will we'll see in the next slides. The most important uses of speech coding are the transmission of signals. For example, the transmission of telephone signals uh, through a, a, a cell phone network or for storage. And a very well-known algorithm in that sense is the MP3 that uh, many of you have used or probably are using uh, to store audio signals or to transmit them through web applications like, um, for example, Spotify or Deezer or uh, SoundCloud. What are the speech coding ob objectives? Well, first we need to uh, compress the signal but we need high perceived quality. That means that we need to know how well a human perceives the audio signals. We want these signals that are compressed and decompressed to keep a high intelligibility. That means high understanding if it's speech signals. The audio coding algorithm needs to achieve a low bit rate. So we need to reduce the number of bits per second of the speech signals. We want to do this process of reducing the bit rate with low computation. So we need a low number of instructions per second, MIPS. MIPS are million of instructions per second. Moreover, we want that this codec or this process of uh, reducing the bit rate is robust to successive processes in which the signal is encoded and decoded several times. So we want that uh, the signal stays the same even if we encode it and decode it several times. And also we want that this signal uh, becomes robust against transmission errors. So in the end, we will compress the audio signal. We will have a set of bits, a bit stream, which will be transmitted through a channel. And in this channel, there will be some interferences or some noises that are in, introduced. And we want that our uh, codec is robust against these interferences and noises. Uh, if we want to have a real-time audio coding, for example, required for video conferences, uh, we also need that this codec requires a low delay, a low latency, meaning that when we are speaking, immediately the sound is compressed and transmitted without any delay, that will be low latency. And also it might need to work with non-speech signals. So for example, think about video conferencing. It could be that additional noises like the keyboard, maybe some touch tone, uh, maybe some noise once or needs to be transmitted, which is not necessarily speech. So it has to be robust to the type of uh, signal that is transmitted. So in the previous lecture, we saw a very powerful method to analyze speech sounds that is based on using a model of the speech production system, the source filter models, which models speech production. And uh, this technique is called linear predictive coding, LPC. 
we will see in this lecture some applications of this LPC uh, technology in the area of speech coding. We will talk about speech quality, uh, so how to assess the speech quality of uh, speech coding algorithms, uh, objective measures for speech quality and also subjective measures. And then we will go to the different types of speech codecs that can uh, that are used nowadays. Uh, these include, for example, waveform coders, parametric coders, and the so-called hybrid analysis by synthesis coders. So let's start first with a general block diagram of the uh, transmission and reception system that we are going to work with. So in the transmitting part, we have a person that starts a conversation, so starts to speak through the phone, and uh, this will generally generate an analog waveform. It is analog, so the first step is to convert this analog signal into the digital domain with an AD converter. This will produce a digital signal, and this digital signal, which is a stream of data, will be analyzed with some kind of a signal processing method and from this analysis we will extract parameters. These parameters which could be for example parameters of the vocal tract and the fundamental frequency. So these parameters describe well the signal that we are aiming to transmit and we will only quantize so that means we will reduce the uh, resolution of these parameters. We will quantize them Next, we will encode them. So we will convert these values of the quantization into bits. So we will obtain a bit pattern and these bits will be encrypted. So they will be scrambled such that are robust against, you know, um, the possibility of uh, unwanted, uh, you know, decoding or reading of this bit stream. So the encryption will encrypt, will, will obscure the information in a particular way that is known in the decoder. Once the bitstream has been encrypted, then it's transmitted and for this a modulation will be used. Uh, that's what it's called a modem uh, in analog telephony. Uh, it could be just a frequency generator that transmits through radio frequency the, the information. And this is the transmitting uh, part for this telephony application. Well, so then we will have the modulation and again, we have an analog waveform, and then the signal is transmitted through the telephone cha channel, which could be cables. In the um, receiver part now, we will obtain a, an analog waveform. So this analog waveform will be demodulated. So it, it has to be brought into the baseband. So um, we have to basically yeah, demodulate it. We will get a set of bits then these bits need to be unscrambled because we have to compensate or recover the encryption. So that's what is doing the unscramble. We have the bit stream. Next, we will decode this bit stream. So we will convert it into quantized parameters. And then these parameters of the, uh, of the speech signal that we obtained in the analysis will be used to synthesize sounds. And then the sounds will be converted from the uh, uh, digital into the analog domain, so digital into analog by the DA converter, and then the signal analog is sent to the uh, receiving uh, person. So this is basically what uh, the system, the co telecommunication system that we are going to, to analyze for speech signals, and we will concentrate in the analog digital conversion, the analysis, and the synthesis, all the other part, and the quantization, of course. Um, the rest is not part of this lecture. So we are talking about the speech signals and uh, these are the parts that have to do with the speech signals. Uh, the other parts uh, have to do more with the transmission of the signals, which is not part of this uh, course. Okay, so what's the minimum bit rate for speech? So let's try to analyze it from a very, uh, let's say, a pragmatic point of view. Uh, the bit rate corresponds to the information, to, to the number of bits, transmitted or compressed per unit of time. In order to compute the minimum bit rate necessary to transmit speech, 
we consider that the speech information trans transmitted is more or less equivalent to the sequence of phonemes uttered. Assuming that the phonemes are the uh, basic unit of the language, the transmission, so the information that re we require to transmit speech is related to the information that we need to create the sequence of phonemes. So if we measure the amount of phonemes that we produce across time, this more or less corresponds with 10 phonemes per second. So when we are speaking on average, we produce 10 phonemes per second. Moreover, we know that in language, in a language, typically we have 30 to 50 phonemes. That's the total amount of possible phonemes. So if we would have 30 phonemes, we would need five bits. So a bit is a zero or a one. So we have two possibilities, two possibilities, and we have five bits. Two to the power of five uh, means 32 possible phonemes. So with five bits, we can encode 32 possible phonemes. So we just need to combine both things. So we have 10 phonemes per second, and we have five bits for each phoneme. This could result in 50 bits per second required to transmit speech signals. Of course, this is a very idealistic way of, uh, of seeing this problem of bit of, of speech coding. Uh, but theoretically, only with 50 bits per second, we should be able to transmit which phonemes are we uttering uh, per time. So in telephony, so through cable, we have a, a bandwidth of 64 kilobits per second in a digital line, or 33.6 kilobits per second in an analog telephone line. So we see that this 50 bits per second that we theoretically need is much, much lower than the bit rates available in our channels. So there is a lot of redundancy that we can add to this signal to make a good speech codec. So once we do a bit rate reduction, we need to assess the quality of this bit rate reduction. And for this purpose, we can use the signal to noise ratio. <coughs> Sorry. The signal to noise ratio is one of the most common objective measures. Objective because there is no subjective um, evaluation, there is no person uh, assessing the quality, it's a pure objective measure uh, for evaluating the performance of a compression algorithm. And the signal to noise ratio is shown in this equation, it relates the power of the signal on the top. So we sum across time, n is the time, all the samples of the signal squared. Okay, so if we would, would have a signal, this is n, and we have a speech signal. So basically the signal to noise ratio is computed by taking the power of each sample, n, and we square it. Okay. And we sum all of these samples. <coughs> In the denominator, we have the difference between the original signal and the compressed signal and decompressed signal. So that's the signal that we would receive at the receiver. And that's the signal that we would have at the input. So if we go back to our system, this would be S of N. And the signal that we receive is S dash of N. And the error signal is the difference between the original signal that we transmitted and the received signal. So that's the error signal, and we wanted this signal to be as low as possible. So here what we have is the error signal that I just mentioned, and then we compute in the same way the power of this error signal by squaring each value of the error signal and summing all these values uh, across time. So the ratio between the power of the original signal and the error signal in decibels, so we do 10, logarithm base 10, results in the signal to noise ratio. And this measure is a good measure primarily for waveform codecs, as we will see. 